हेलो एवरीवन गुड मॉर्निंग टुडे इज ट्वेंटी एट्थ ऑफ जून एंड आई वेलकम यू ऑल टू द हिंदू न्यूज़पेपर एनालिसिस डिस्कशन सो गाइस इन द टुडे इज वीडियो विल डिस्कस द एंटायर एनालिसिस ऑफ हिंदू न्यूज़पेपर ऑल द आर्टिकल्स विद द बैकग्राउंड वील बी टेकिंग इन दिस सेशन एंड आई वुड ऑल्सो लाइक टू टेल यू दैट यू कैन डाउनलोड द एक्सप्लेनर नोट्स ऑफ दिस सेशन फ्रॉम अर टेलीग्राम चैनल द लिंक फॉर द चैनल इज गिवन इन डिस्क्रिप्शन बॉक्स इन यूट्यूब now first of all guys let's see the overview of newspaper so that we can understand that which articles are actually important in the today's newspaper so uh, first article here we have india needs a uniform civil code affirms modi we'll take this particular article then last chinese reporter leaves india after visa extension denied so basically guys we have seen in the past few days that this issue is going on between india and china where both the countries have denied the visas to the journalists of the respective countries so china has denied visas to the indian journalist in china and the same india has denied the visas to the chinese journalist and the last of the chinese reporter leaves india so basically guys this thing shows the worsening of the relations between the india and china and such kind of a things uh, basically such kind of a things should be avoided in order to ensure the uh, discussions to uh, in order that the discussions are continuing then <clears throat> moving on uh, harassment of w cj reporter is unacceptable nothing much important in this examination in this direction for the exam government extends deadline for aadhar based payment for mg narega to august 31 now guys understand this thing government has switched to the uh, government has switched to the digital e transactions for the mg narega work so mg narega stands for mahatma gandhi national rural employment guarantee act earlier the payments for mg narega were given in cash but since the last few years government has insisted that all the payments for the mg narega work will be given in the bank accounts which will be connected with the or which will be seeded with the aadhar so basically on the basis of your aadhar data your bank could be identified and directly the money can be deposited in that particular account so every uh, uh, mg narega worker has to attach their bank account which is seeded with the aadhar number so for that the deadline has been extended multiple number of times okay now you are not required to see this number that how many aadhars have been seeded okay or what is the latest date etc for the exam no need to go there then further moving on in the city section we have largely the regional issues these tenders advertisements and all such kind of a things uh, nothing is much important here in for the exam so we will be moving on in this particular direction guys and here there is one article seven products from uttar pradesh get gi tag so we'll see this particular article for the prelims examination and uh, moving on then we come to the editorial page so the first article tracing the arc of american exceptionism for india so very good article talking about that how in america is seeing india as a special partner and how a lot of exceptions have been given to india in the last 20 25 years we'll take this article then india and us have entered a new era of mutual trust and cooperation so again this article is also on the us we'll take this article as well today actually there are the three articles on india us okay uh, all of them are on some different dimensions we'll take them then pay heed to resurgence in mili uh, militancy in the rajouri pooch so basically guys the rajouri pooch sector okay we have seen that in the past there is a lot of infiltration of the terrorist that has happened okay militancy in this particular region has been a very uh, ha has been a concerning thing now the article is talking about that there is a revival of militancy that is going on so basically government needs to have a uh, approach which is integrative okay silo based approach okay knee jerk reactions will not help an integrative approach is needed to be there largely the article is giving basically the terrorist organizations which have been responsible for all these kind of things okay then Uh, however guys uh, uh, moving on uh, with respect to the examination much of academic substance is not there largely the details of the militancy sector are given in this article okay then further moving on uh, a model for quality and inclusive education we'll take this article after that uh, uh, retired men cities have most financial literacy survey so basically reserve bank of india has given some details with respect to the number of people who have the financial literacy so for example here you see that the financial knowledge male female uh, married person versus single people with respect to the age group so the numbers etc have been given okay uh, here there is one the article a row over rice in karnataka 
तो बेसिकली गाइज रिसेंटली द गवर्नमेंट इन कर्नाटका दे हैव कम आउट विद द स्कीम वे आर दे हैव सेट दैट टेन के जी ऑफ फूड ग्रेन विल बी प्रोवाइडेड टू द पीपल तो बेसिकली गाइज अनभाग्य स्कीम इज देयर अंडर द नेशनल फूड सिक्योरिटी एक्ट फाइव के जी फूड ग्रेन पर पर्सन इज गिवन बट द कर्नाटका गवर्नमेंट इज लुकिंग टू गिव टेन के जी तो दे वॉन्ट एडिशनल फूड ग्रेन्स दे अप्लाइड टू दे आस द फूड ग्रेन्स फ्रॉम द फूड कॉर्पोरेशन ऑफ इंडिया बट द सेंटर गवर्नमेंट इज डिनाइड दे सेट दैट वी विल नॉट सेल द फूड अंडर द ओपन मार्केट स्कीम तो अंडर द ओपन मार्केट सेल स्कीम द स्टेट गवर्नमेंट कैन बाय द फूड ग्रेन्स फ्रॉम द गवर्नमेंट बट नाउ दे से दैट विल नॉट सेल और और बेसिकली द कोटाज हैव बिन रिवाइज तो दिस हैज बिकम नाउ अ पॉलिटिकल इशू दे से के दैट डेलीबरेटली बिकॉज इन कर्नाटका कांग्रेस गवर्नमेंट इज देयर बीजेपी गवर्नमेंट डेलीबरेटली इज ट्राइंग टू सैबोटाज देयर स्कीम तो दिस इज समथिंग दैट हैज कम हेयर ओके देन फर्दर मूविंग ऑन गाइज टू द नेक्स्ट पेज टेक्स्ट एंड कॉन्टेक्स्ट द कंसर्न अबाउट इंडिया यू एस डिजिटल ट्रेड विल टेक दिस पर्टिकुलर आर्टिकल विद रिस्पेक्ट टू द एग्जामिनेशन फेमिनिस्ट अप्रोच टू इंटरनेशनल रिलेशन सो गाइज इफ यू हैव PSIR political science and international relation then you should read this article otherwise the article doesn't contains much of a substance for the general studies okay and if you are if you have the PSIR optional i will recommend you that you please take out some time and read this particular article okay so the article has a literary or a philosophical undertone which you should read okay otherwise for gs point of view no need to go too much in detail then further moving on in this particular direction Uh, sedition law must retain india's integrity must must to retain india's integrity we'll see this particular article then largely here we have the political articles not very important okay registration of birth death by aadhar authentication allowed so basically guys a few months back there was this proposal that the death certificate uh, birth certificates for that particular thing consent should be given and the aadhar authentication should be allowed that uh, should be given now it has been allowed okay now it has been allowed so ministry of electronics and information technology has allowed the registrar general of india to use the aadhar database for the authentication okay uh, however beyond that you are not required to go too much in detail in this particular article then further moving on modi's pitch for ucc so this uh, entire ucc ucc issue is there we'll take that then uh, um, after that again moving on in this particular direction guys uh we come to the world page russia to transfer wagner hardware yesterday we have taken a full page article on this wagner mutiny that has erupted in the russia uh you are not required to track it now every day so basically the chairman of the wagner group has has arrived in belarus and the hardware of the wagner group will now be given will now be taken over by the russian military russian defense forces so this is all about it for exam no need to go too much in detail here okay then guys uh, again netan news security risk mount as violence spirals in west bank understand this particular thing guys that this issue is there then pakistan passes law paving way for return of exile former pm these are evolutionary details you are not required to track every day these particular kind of articles fine understand this thing for gs paper number 2 there is international relations section you need to see those articles which concern either with the india's foreign policy or the articles or the issues which might have impact on indian interest beyond that no need to read every other thing okay uh fine however okay we have seen all these particular things high court issues notice to uh, the purush writer etc nothing much important okay then further moving on uh, business page quarter 4 current account deficit narrows to 1.3 billion dollar okay uh, again one more thing i will tell you guys that see uh, with respect to the indian economy uh, the state of indian economy is very much important how the indian economy right now is doing that is important okay we have seen many articles in the past also that particular line but every month export data import data how much current account deficit okay is there okay every month data are not required why because by the time you will write your exam these numbers will change okay so you are not required to track them every uh, then and now okay then further moving on in this particular direction okay uh, after that uh, largely we have the corporate trends and all such kind of a things then we have the sports page and guys towards the last we have the science page can laos cave remain established when human first came to southeast asia 
now understand this particular thing guys that the science page usually contains some very good articles which can directly be used in our examination but every science page article will be relevant for GS3 or prelims exam no not the case sometimes the articles are specifically talking on very much microscopic kind of issues for example the article here it is talking about the caves there are some of the findings that have been done in the caves okay so the evidences the research papers okay are being discussed here you are not required to go too much in detail with respect to the findings in the caves of the laos that has happened okay if it has been india then we should have gone too much in detail but for the laos the caves the findings the estimates the different different studies papers no need to go too much in detail I hope that you are able to understand that what uh, I hope you are able to understand that how the paper should be analyzed. Now, let's discuss all the relevant articles one by one in detail. So, this is the synoptic notes that you can download from our telegram channel. Link is given in description box in YouTube. Now, uh, today we'll take the quotation from the Otto von Bismarck. Okay. Otto von Bismarck, who is responsible for the unification of Germany, the Iron Man. With bad laws, he says, with bad laws and good civil servants, it's still possible to govern. But with bad civil servants, even the best laws cannot help. Now, in ethics, we particularly deal with the conduct of the civil servants, ethical responsibilities of the civil servants. Okay. So, the article says this particular thing that laws might not be good sometimes, laws might not be completely ethical, might not be rational, might not be just, but if the civil servants are, if, if, if the civil servants are good, if they have ethical and moral uprightness, if they have ethical and moral understanding, they will be able to use that law to still bring the good. But if the civil servants are bad, if the civil servants are bad, if their con uh, intentions are bad, even with the best of the best laws, they will not be able to govern. They will bring the misgovernance. Okay. So, this is a very good idea. You can use it in GS4 ethics as well as in GS paper number 2, role of civil services in a democracy. You can use this particular issue. So, that is all about it. And now guys, moving to the first article for today. Okay. Moving to the first article for today, the concerns about India-US digital trade. The concerns about India-US digital trade. Okay. Now, uh, recently we have seen this thing that the Prime Minister of India has visited US and as he has visited US, largely the discussions on two things have happened. That is the critical technologies. In critical technologies, semiconductor cooperation, drone technologies, etc. Okay. And the second development that was there is with respect to the military cooperation. Okay. These are the two very important discussions that happened. Now, this particular article is talking about the issues concerning the digital trade between the India and US. Let's understand this particular issue in little bit detail. Now, first of all, guys, uh, this article will be important in GS2, International Relation, India-US Relation. Now, first of all, some of the basic things uh, you need to understand Basically, guys, uh, when we talk about the India and US, both countries, now what has happened, India and US, in 1990s, we have seen that the US has imposed the sanction on India, okay, because of the nuclear test that India did. And India and USA were the estranged democracies. And now they have become the engaged democracies. Okay, in last 20 years, they have become the engaged democracies. And in this particular line, we have seen that the bilateral trade also between the two countries have increased. And when we talk about the bilateral trades, in the financial year 23, US emerged the biggest trading partner of India. And there is also the increase in the trade, about 7.65% increase in the bilateral trade is there. So, the bilateral trade of these many billion dollars was carried in 22-23 between the US and India. But this potential is very much less. US says this particular thing that a digital trade has many of the problems. Now, what is this digital trade? Guys, understand this thing. You might be knowing about the big tech companies such as the Microsoft is there, Meta is there, Apple is there, Amazon is there. So, point is that these companies, they have a considerable presence in India, but they are not able to leverage, they are not able to scale their products, they are not able to generate the revenue from the Indian market because of the many concerns that come in between. 
we are going to discuss all these particular concerns one by one okay so what are these concerns first of all guys understand this particular thing uh, both india and us have recently signed the icet icet stands for the initiative for critical and emerging technologies okay so both the countries have become the partners and therefore on the technology both the countries need to reduce the barrier but that is not happening now concerns are there number one number one it has been said that india does not shares the geospatial data india does not shares the geospatial data with the us companies us firms now guys understand this thing uh, for example india is running navic india is running navic navic is india's indigenous navigation system so as we have the global positioning system which has largely been created by the us okay we have our own navic and guys then the geospatial data with respect to the topography with respect to the terrain with respect to the different different geographies of india a lot of data is classified as sensitive data and they are not shared with the american companies okay though government shares some of the data with the indian companies now the us says that this is a discriminatory the entire geospatial data which is there available in the public domain it should be made available to the usa also geospatial data means the geographical data with respect to the topographies landforms okay different different uh, geographical sectors of india etc okay this is something the next issue guys that comes here is that basically the article uh, basically the concern is there that uh, us says india has been a democratic country has been governed with the democratic values and in democratic values values of free speech expression etc are there which india respected but now government is going for the censorship there is a great government censorship and control over the political speech for example recently you have read about that also uh, jack dorsey issue where he said now jack dorsey was the ceo of the twitter he said this particular thing that it is very much difficult to do business in india because government is all the time controlling that what can go over the twitter they are making so much of request to take down the content etc so they say this that that government is censoring the social media platforms asking them to take down the content and all such kind of a things it is not basically it is it is restricting the potential of the tech companies particularly the social media companies then the next issue that comes here is that guys the third issue third issue that's there is the issue with respect to the equalization levy issue with respect to the equalization levy now uh, we'll discuss first of all what equalization levy is okay the equalization levy was introduced in 2016 and it is also sometimes called as the google tax it is also called as the google tax now what is this equalization levy let me give you one example now suppose there is this facebook okay now let's say i operate one business let's say i operate one business and name of my business is the abc enterprises i want to promote my business and i want to reach the potential customers what i can do i can put an advertisement okay i can put an advertisement on the facebook facebook will promote my business okay will show my business to the facebook users and for that particular thing i will give some money to the facebook for their advertisement service let's say i am giving 1 lakh rupees to the facebook now 6% equalization levy it means that out of that 1 lakh rupees 6% would be charged as a tax 6% would be charged as a equalization levy because facebook has given a digital service in the lieu of this digital service they have earned some money let's say this 1 lakh rupees so on that they have to give the tax so this was a 6% equalization levy okay that was introduced in 2016 same happens for example on youtube i am promoting my business okay then i will pay give the money to youtube on that also there will be the 6% tax or equalization levy that will be charged so this came in 2016 at that point of a time there were many of the tech companies which said that the tax rate is very much high right now there are no rules to govern this particular tax so there were these issues that were created then guys the next came 2020 the next came 2020 now 2020 there was this equalization levy 2.0 that came now what is equalization levy 2.0 government said that 
टू परसेंट टैक्स विल ऑल्सो बी इम्पोज नाउ ऑन द ई कॉमर्स प्लेयर्स ओके अर्लियर ई कॉमर्स प्लेयर्स वर नॉट इंक्लूडेड ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी ई कॉमर्स प्लेयर ऑल्सो गॉट इंक्लूडेड नाउ इन इंडिया वी हैव एमेजन फॉर एग्जाम्पल ओके एमेजन तो वट एवर वट एवर द रेवेन्यू ओके द एमेजन इज मेकिंग ओके ऑन दैट टू परसेंट ऑफ द टैक्स वुड बी इम्पोज सो फॉर ई कॉमर्स ऑल्सो दिस केम नाउ बेसिकली द वेस्टर्न वर्ल्ड पर्टिकुलरली द यू एस ए हैज अ प्रॉब्लम विद दैट वट प्रॉब्लम दे हैव दिस से दिस पर्टिकुलर थिंग दैट राइट नाउ द ग्लोबल रूल्स फॉर टैक्सिंग द डिजिटल ट्रेड हैज नॉट बीन फाइनलाइज on that particular thing i tell you right now the negotiations are also going under the wto so the usa says that until we finalize these rules developing countries should not impose these particular taxes these taxes are arbitrary may number of a times a tax rate also becomes an issue so these are the issues that are there okay so then the issue number 4 now guys understand this particular thing this is largely a ready made answer for a question if it comes on the india us irritants okay or india us economic irritants this is a ready made question you can directly put these particular points then the next issue that comes here is with respect to the it rules of 2021 now basically it rules of 2021 were issued and it largely covered the three players it covered the ott over the top platforms for example amazon prime netflix it applied to the social media intermediaries such as facebook instagram youtube etc and third it applied to the digital news okay now the social media intermediaries okay for example uh, for example twitter is a social media intermediary whatsapp is a social media intermediary facebook instagram these are the social media intermediary and all these companies are the us companies okay and these uh, now the us says this particular thing that through these it rules 2021 a lot of compliances have been imposed on our social media intermediary companies for example government came out with the law that a local compliance officer has to be appointed by the intermediary a grievance redressal mechanism is to be prepared by the intermediary earlier it was said that if government makes a request to any intermediary that you have to take down a content they have to take down that content within 72 hours later it got uh, earlier it was said the 24 hours later it got revised to the 72 hours okay so all these particular things these social media intermediary companies such as the facebook twitter whatsapp they have criticized they say that a lot of compliance burden is being imposed on us and it will impact our trade it 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 will impact our performance then recently government has also come out with the grievance appellate committee what is this grievance appellate committee now see this thing suppose on facebook there is a, some content and you have a problem with that content you can uh, you can raise your grievance to the facebook that you ensure uh, that this thing is removed or you register that grievance with the facebook facebook did some redressal but you are not happy with that redressal where you will go earlier there was no way now you can approach to these grievance appellate committee which have been constituted by the government now all these now these grievance appellate committee will then see that whether the redressal by the social media intermediary is correct or not now what is happening the social media intermediaries are saying okay, that this all these things have put a lot of burden on us burden of compliance and therefore these particular things are not good so this is one concern then guys the fifth concern that comes here in this particular direction is with respect to the digital personal data protection bill that we have introduced recently guys understand this particular thing that uh, uh, um, bn shri krishna committee was constituted in 2018 19 it for the first time recommended that india needs a digital personal data protection bill bill was brought in parliament that bill was taken back last year 2022 in 2022 again a new bill on the personal data protection actually has come here i hope you understood it now there is one problem uh, there is a, sorry one provision of this digital personal data protection bill 2022 which has not been liked by the, the social media intermediary company now what is this it concerns with respect to the data localization it concerns with respect to the data localization now what is the meaning of data localization let's understand this see uh, right now there is amazon 
and you, me, we all of have stored a lot of information on Amazon. For example, our card information, our card detail, our CVV number. That information is stored on Amazon. Now, Amazon will actually be storing that particular information on some physical server. Now, these physical servers often are located outside India. They might be located in America. They might be located in Norway, Sweden, anywhere. Data localization laws provides that the data which is getting generated in a country, find whether that data can be taken in some other country or not. Okay, now understand this thing. A data localization in very simple terms provides this particular thing that all the data that is getting generated in a country needs to be stored in the servers, need to be stored in the servers which are physically located in that particular country. Okay, so Indian data needs to be physically located in Indian servers, not outside not outside. This is the data localization. Now what happened few years back, Reserve Bank of India strictly provided that data localization should be implemented in India immediately. Now this digital personal data protection bill, what it has said on the data localization, it has provided that uh, cross border flow of data will be allowed only in the case of the countries that will be notified by the center. Now understand this thing, they have taken the middle path. Neither we are completely prohibiting that you cannot take the data outside, nor we are freely allowing that okay, you take and you store the data in any country. We will notify the group of countries, list of countries, only in those countries if you want to store the Indian data, you can store. Otherwise, other countries you cannot store. Okay, and this list of the country will be notified by the center. Now understand this thing. When we talk about India guys, India has 759 million active internet users. Okay, 50% of our population, it is actively using the internet. It is a gold mine for data. Lot of data is getting generated. Then data is the new oil. Data is the new gold. Countries, they want to take that data and want to treat that data as they want. They don't want too much of interference of the government. So this is something that they have not liked. Okay, fine. Okay, so this is guys all about this particular thing. Now, uh, the parliamentary committee last year 2022 has also recommended that we should adopt the Digital Competition Act. Digital Competition Act which will ensure th the level playing field between the Indian companies and between the foreign companies. So that the foreign companies don't feel that they are being discriminated or more preference is given to the Indian companies. But that has actually not come. So basically, these are all the concerns on the digital trade front. These are all the concerns on the economic front between the India and US. And I am categorically recommending you this thing that after this, you are not required to track any other issues because 150 marks question, 250, sorry, 150 uh, words question, 250 words question, whatever it comes, you will be able to justify all the questions out of this content. Okay. So I hope you have understood it. And now we'll move to the next article. Okay, so here we have this particular article, sedition law must to retain India's integrity. Now, we'll see this particular article with respect to the GS paper number two, within GS paper number two, governance, there is a critical evaluation. There is this topic of GS paper number two, there is this topic of the critical evaluation of the government laws and policies and provisions. Okay, now, first of all, what is a sedition? So, sedition is provided in section 124A of IPC, Indian Penal Code. Sedition provides that if any person tries to create disaffection for the government of India or for against for the, in, if any person is trying to create the disaffection against the government of India, against the state, then that particular thing is an offence. You cannot create any disaffection either by spoken words, either by written words. Okay. Now, when we talk about the sedition, it has been a very much a controversial law because the Britishers came with the sedition law. Because when the Britishers were there in India, freedom fighters were challenging all the time the British government. So, in order to control the freedom fighters, in order to arrest the freedom fighters, the sedition law was introduced. That whenever a freedom fighter will criticize the British government, they will arrest him. That you have created an offence under the sedition law. Now, after the independence also, this sedition law has been retained. And many number of times, the opposition people or the people who are criticizing the government, they are arrested under the sedition. Last year, what happened? Last year, what happened? 2022. 
सुप्रीम कोर्ट सुप्रीम कोर्ट केप्ट द सेडिशन लॉ अंडर एबेन्स इट मीन्स दैट नो न्यू केस विल बी फाइल्ड अंडर सेडिशन द ऑन गोइंग केसेज अंडर द सेडिशन दे नीड टू बी इमीडिएटली दे नीड टू बी केप्ट ऑन होल्ड ओके नो न्यू ट्रायल विल हैपन अंडर द सेडिशन सो इन ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी टू सुप्रीम कोर्ट हेल्ड इट्स अंडर अबेन्स नाउ लॉ कमीशन रिसेंटली द लॉ कमीशन ट्वेंटी सेकेंड लॉ कमीशन दे हैव गिवन देयर रिपोर्ट विद रिस्पेक्ट टू दे हैव गिवन देयर रिपोर्ट एंड इन दिस रिपोर्ट दे हैव सेट दैट सेडिशन लॉ कैन बी रिटेंड एंड नॉट ओनली दिस दे हैव ऑल्सो सेट दिस पर्टिकुलर थिंग दैट द पनिशमेंट फॉर द सडिशन इज ऑल्सो टू बी इनहांस्ड नाउ दिस इज समथिंग विच हैज बिकम अ कॉन्ट्रोवर्शियल मेनी ऑफ द पीपल पर्टिकुलरली द इंटेलेक्चुअल दे हैव नॉट लाइक दिस पर्टिकुलर आइडिया दे सेट दैट सडिशन वॉज अ ड्रेकोनियन कॉलोनियल लॉ you should have recommended the scrapping of this but you have recommended the retention of the sedition so it has become a politically controversial issue okay now so the chairman of the law commission chairman of the law commission justice ritu raj avasthi he uh, has talked on certain things and largely more important than this uh, he has proposed a new standard operating procedure procedural safeguards which should be used whenever the sedition law is being used so that misuse doesn't happen so that procedural safeguards that have been recommended we are going to see that also so basically so basically it has been provided by the law commission that we have many laws which concerns with respect to the security of india for example there is the unlawful activities prevention act is there national securities act is there but the field that uapa deals in is different the field that nsa deals in it is different and the field that the sedition is dealing is different so we need to have a separate law of sedition we cannot take the issues of sedition under the uapa and under the national security act moreover it has been said that these acts have even more stringent provisions okay so therefore retaining the sedition a separate law makes sense in the case of india moreover they say this particular thing that simply a thing is colonial it is not the logic to remove that particular law even guys today when we talk about india theek okay, hai 1935 government of india act uh, many of the things even in the constitution they have been borrowed from the 1935 government of india act many countries still are carrying many of the colonial laws okay so this thing simply cannot be cannot be the ground okay then next thing that comes here is that uh, the law commission have recommended the procedural safeguards okay so that misuse of the law doesn't happens abuse of the law doesn't happens what are the procedural safeguards now understand this procedural safeguard very importantly this had said number 1 step by step we'll see number 1 it had said that whenever the complaint under the sedition has to be filed that particular before the inquiry is to be done and the inquiry can only be done by the police officer who is the rank of inspector or above okay so directly you cannot file the sedition fir first the inquiry will be done which will be done by the police officer who is above the rank of inspector okay inspector or above secondly this particular inquiry has to be completed within 7 days okay and when this inquiry will be completed the preliminary report of that inquiry preliminary inquiry report should be submitted to the competent government authority now what will be this government authority it will be defined by the government okay you need to submit that inquiry report okay and you have to take the permission from this government authority that can we arrest that person or, or can we lodge the fir against that person or not and even only when this authority gives the permission then the fir can be lodged then only the fir can be lodged is it clear or not find all and that is also if they find some kind of an evidence okay so this is all this is the way as how the fir under the sedition can be filed mm, this is so they say that after we adopt this procedural safeguard after we adopt these procedural safeguards a lot of problems with respect to the misuse and abuse of sedition will automatically come down so they are hopeful that we should retain it secondly uh, right now when we talk about the section 124 punishment can be up to 3 hours imprisonment okay which may go to life okay they say okay, that further more fines fines are to be increased minimum punishment fine maximum punishment fine they have talked about let increase the punishment also 
okay this is something that they have come which has actually become the controversial as well that is all about this article and now moving to the next article strategic high india and the us have entered new era of mutual trust and cooperation now this article is again important for gs paper number 2 india us india us largely this particular article is talking about the defense cooperation between india and us that has been uh, that has been achieved in the recent visit by the indian prime minister to the usa moreover this article is also giving us the background of the high profile military cooperations that between the india and us have happened in the past okay now moving on moving on to the article so first of all this recent recent visit by the indian prime minister to the usa two things largely have got finalized two things largely have got finalized number one number one there is a decision to jointly manufacture the jet engines okay the jet engines that is f414 engines will jointly be manufactured by general electric of us and hindustan aeronautic limited hindustan aeronautics limited okay uh, not only the engines will be manufactured but the technology transfer by the general electric to the hindustan aeronautics limited will be done moreover the defense indigenization will also happen defense indigenization means that indian made component will also be used this was the first then the second agreement that has now understand these engines will be used into the light combat aircrafts of fine for example tejas is a light combat aircraft so the light combat aircraft these engines will be used then second is that india is procuring india is procuring 31 high altitude long endurance mq9b unmanned aerial vehicles unmanned aerial vehicles general atomics is providing these unmanned aerial vehicles to india 31 will be procured out of the 31 15 will be given to the uh, uh, 15 will be given to the navy 8 will be given to the army and the other 8 will be given to the air force okay so this is something that has happened recently now in the past also india's defense cooperation has been very good for example guys india has bought all these weaponry from the usa in the past let me uh, let me tell you what these are for example c130 c17 globe master transport aircraft it is a huge aircraft for transporting the uh, to transport for transporting the assets of the defense forces from one place to other place so these transport aircrafts we have procured then uh, ah 64e apache attack helicopters chinook helicopters fine mh60r multi role helicopters p8i maritime patrol aircraft fine ultra light hoverzers all these weaponry we have procured from the usa usa is also now pushing forward that india should also buy the f16 and f a18 aircraft from india usa also so usa is ready to give even more weaponry to india okay now why usa is doing this particular thing on one hand usa wants to build the capability of india because india can then be a dependable partner for usa in the asia pacific region now in asia pacific region usa is facing the confrontation with the china okay so tomorrow if usa has to tackle the china india can help usa so usa is making india uh, capable and reliable second is that guys you understand right now india is having a lot of cooperation with russia defense cooperation is with, with the russia so us wants to provide all the hardware to india so that the india russia relation on the defense front gets diluted okay so this is about it this is about it okay then the next issue that comes in this particular direction is that uh, the next issue that comes in this particular direction is that you see this thing that we are uh, developing uh, all for all these for example uh, mq9b uh, drones we are getting technology for jet engines we are getting technology at the same time we have also signed the cooperation on semiconductor technologies space technology the point is that over a period of time these particular things will make india self reliant atmanirbhar also when india will get these technologies india will become the atmanirbhar as well okay now uh, further when we talk about the india usa india usa they have also signed the four foundational agreements on the defense cooperation so basically guys there are the four 
agreements that USA signs, which is the foundational agreement for defense cooperation, they are the concerns with respect to the logistic transfer, sharing of the geospatial data information. So there are the four targets, there, four uh, ag agreements that are there. All the four India and USA have signed. So it shows that India and US have the highest level of defense cooperation. Okay, but at the same time guys, at the same time, India also should be very much careful for maintaining their strategic autonomy. Now, what is the idea of strategic autonomy? Strategic autonomy idea simply means that India will not have any permanent friend, will not have any permanent enemy. India will choose its partners and friends on the need basis. So, we are not committing to any one country that we are your permanent friend. So, this is the strategic autonomy of India. Now, India should not compromise it when we are becoming too much dependent on the US. Okay, so this is something that we should not compromise. So that is all guys about it. And now, moving to the next article. Okay, um, so there is uh, some of the questions. I will take the questions. First of all, a very good morning to all of you. Uh, what is the open market system for buying the food grain? Recently, Punjab government accept the Karnataka plea giving. Uh, yes, dear, we have discussed the open market system is that directly you can go to the FCI and you can buy the food grains by giving money to them. Okay, that is the open market system for buying food grains. Okay, the FCI government denied. So therefore, now they are buying from Punjab because Punjab has uh, good quality. Uh, they have excess food grain because of the green revolution. Sir, I have a personal question, how to deal with loss of a family member? I lost someone day before yesterday and I don't know how to deal with it. Okay, uh, dear, uh, uh, you please do one thing, you drop me a message on the telegram. Okay, so directly drop me a message on telegram and we'll talk on that particular thing. Fine, and another thing is that, see, you need to accept the life as it is right now fine so though it is a misfortunate thing and it should not have happened and i know that it is very uh, draining okay but again we have to accept the life and we have to keep on moving okay uh, fine okay then uh, seven products from uttar pradesh get gi tag there's a one more question sir is it possible to restart the Ethics classes, okay. Uh, um, uh, where, dear, tell me where. Okay, seven products from UP gets GI tag. Okay, now uh, this particular article will see with respect to the prelims examination because in prelims often the GI tags and all such kind of a things, these things come in the exam. Okay, now moving on. Uh, First of all, what do we mean by the GI? Geographical indication. What do we mean by GI? Geographical indication. Listen this thing. So, there are certain, there are certain products that are being manufactured in a particular place. There are certain crops that are growing at a particular place because of favorable geography, because of favorable climatic condition. And they have their distinct texture, they have their distinct aroma. In the case of crops, in the case of certain products that are being manufactured in a particular place, they have their own distinct history, they have their own distinct art and all such kind of things. Okay, so what we do, we give the GI tag to these products, to these crops, fine, by GI tag, these products get a unique marketability. For example, Darjeeling tea. Now, only the tea that is being produced into the Darjeeling can be sold under the brand name Darjeeling tea. The tea grown in another part of the world, another part of the country cannot be sold under the brand name of the Darjeeling tea. Now we all know that how good, how aromatic the Darjeeling tea is. So when any product get a GI tag, it gets a distinct marketability. That particular product or the people in that particular region who are making that particular product can use that particular unique GI recognition. So it gives a good marketability. Okay, and we have the GI tag act under which we give the GI classification or GI tag to the different different products. Recently, what has happened, seven products from the Uttar Pradesh, they have been given the geographical indication tag. What are these seven products? We'll discuss these one by one. Okay, so the number one is Amroha Dholak. Amroha Dholak. So Dholak is a musical instrument. Okay. It is made up of wood and on both the sides there is, okay, so the dholak, it is a, a musical instrument like this. 
fine so on either of the sides there will be a leather skin and it will be made of wood would be hollow in uh, between so amroha dholak they are manufactured around the region of amroha in uttar pradesh okay and this dholak is made up of the wood from mango jackfruit and teak wood and the leather okay on both of these sides the leather that is fitted it is derived from the goat skin okay so it has a particular sound it has a particular type of a sound and it has a rich history associated with this dholak making so amroha dholak from uttar pradesh have got that then next is the uh, is the exclusive uh, um, the next is the handloom just a minute the next is the handloom and furnishing products from the bagpat okay now if you see here if you see here so we have the we have the bagpat home furnishing bagpat home furnishing so basically guys what is home furnishing home furnishing is the home furniture carpet sofa table chair all these things come under the home furnishing so bagpat and merat bagpat and merat are two places which are very much famous for the handloom home furnishing products for the home furnishing products and the bagpat home furnishing products have got the gi tag okay now these products they are being made from so much uh, of a, from a very long period of time after that guys there is the barabanki handloom products barabanki handloom products okay uh, handloom products such as the bed sheets and all such kind of a things so they have also been given the gi tag then the next is the kalpi home handmade paper kalpi handmade paper now it is uh, some uh, some people say this thing that this handmade paper in the kalpi region it was started by the munna lal khaddari a gandhian family uh, a, a gandhian member okay he introduced this particular craft in the 1940 and by hand they are making the paper since 1940 but some other people say that the handmade paper is being produced in the kalpi region even before that okay then the next is the mahoba gora patthar hastashilp mahoba gora patthar hastashilp patthar means stone hastashilp means the hand crafted stone okay so it is a stone craft where they use they use the soft stone they use the soft stone and out of that stone they will be making the different different uh, different different art designs okay they will be making different different products out of that particular stone it is also also called as the pyro flight stone on which they are making this particular craft okay this is a white colored stone okay then next is the tarkashi tarkashi now what is tarkashi tarkashi is from the manpuri region in uttar pradesh and it is an art of integrating the brass wire in the woodwork okay let's say there is a wooden let's say there is a wooden box in the wooden box there will be very integrate designs from the brass wires that will be integrated that is the tarkashi okay so this is also what has got the gi tag in uttar pradesh then there is the next sambal horn craft sambal horn craft so dead animals horn dead animals horn is taken and out of that horn some craft or some designs are made so that is the sambal hand craft okay so these are the products that have uh, got the gi tag okay um, you can see all of their name okay uh, largely in upsc examinations they don't go too much in detail in that just they will be giving you the name that this product uh, recently got a gi tag was in news it is from which state they will give you the options and then you have to choose so amroha dholak is one then mohoba gora patthar hastashilp is second then manpuri tarkashi is third sambal horn craft is fourth bagpat home furnishing is fifth parabanki handloom product sixth and kalpi homemade handmade paper is the seventh so these are the seven products that have got the gi tag okay now moving to the next article moving to the next article tracing the arc of american exceptionism for india okay now basically this is a guys a very good article i'll say it is a five star article for our gs paper number 2 india us relations india us relations okay so basically uh, the article is actually talking about that the last 25 years have been very much important for the india us ties so basically guys 25 years back india us ties were at the lowest point why smiling buddha 2 india 
tested the nuclear weapon in 1998 and after that USA imposed sanctions on India. That was the lowest point into the India-US relation. But after that, India-US relations have revived and today uh, deep relations are there between the India and US and we have already seen the articles where so much of cooperation is being done with the India by the US. So we see this particular thing that relations have been cultivated by five American presidents and four Indian prime ministers. So Bill Clinton, George Bush, George W. Bush, Barack Obama, Donald Trump, Joe Biden, these five American presidents and four of the, uh, 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 three of the Indian Prime Minister, sorry, I said four earlier, no four, three of the Indian Prime Minister, that is Atal Bihari Vajpayee, Manmohan Singh, Narendra Modi, all these three have played an important role. Now, we see this particular thing, that during the clinton Vajpayee era, during the era of the Bill Clinton and Vajpayee, uh, basically the impetus was given to the summit level diplomacy fine USA and India they start they started participating in the summits where both are uh, uh, where, where both were the participants then we see this particular thing that Manmohan Bush and Manmohan Obama relation highlighted the nuclear diplomacy okay civil nuclear agreement was also signed then Modi Obama Modi Trump worked on the trade and military diplomacy and even the Modi Biden partnership is going on to the military re relationship. Now, basically the article is saying this, the article is saying that there is a shift in the America's perception. So, there was American exceptionalism that earlier prevailed. Now, what is the meaning of this American exceptionalism? American exceptionalism understands this particular thing. American exceptionalism means that America thinks itself to be a unique country, which is an exceptional country. Fine, America can impose on other countries what should be done, what should not be done. But those things don't apply actually in America itself. So America considered itself as a unique and exceptional country. That was the American exceptionalism. Okay, but that has turned, turned that, that that has changed into the American exceptionism for India. American exceptionism for India. What is the meaning of American exceptionism for India? There are many things where India is not following but America wants. But still America is giving lot of leg room to India. America is giving lot of runway to the India. Though India is not agreeing with the America, we will take the example. Let's take these examples. For example, under the Arms Export Control Act, sanctions were imposed on India. But Mr. Bill Clinton gave a waiver to the India. Then India was allowed to carry their nuclear program even when India has not joined the non-proliferation treaty. India has never joined the comprehensive nuclear test ban treaty but still India is further taking up the nuclear weapon development program. Waiver has been given to the India. India is not a formal member under the nuclear supplier group but still India is pursuing the nuclear technology. Support is being given to the India. Fine. So India never signed that. Why? Because India is considered as an exception by the America. This is the American exceptionism for India. Understand this thing that it is not the case that all the countries which have not signed the NPT, waiver has been given to them. Pakistan has also not signed the NPT but no waiver is given to them. But India has been given the waiver. Then guys understand this thing. Also India has been given the waiver under the Katsa Act. What is Katsa? Katsa stands for countering American adversaries through the Sanction Act. Now, there are certain countries which America considers as their adversary. For example, there are, there are three such countries that is Iran. Uh, there are three such countries, Iran, North Korea and Russia. Now, as per this Katsa Act, as per this Katsa Act, America says that if any country will do trade with the India, North Korea, uh, sorry, Iran, North Korea and Russia, we will impose sanctions on those countries doing trade with these three countries. Now, Understand this thing, Russia is one of the country and India is procuring S-400 missile system from Russia. S-400 missile system from Russia. USA did not impose a sanction on India. Fine, but when, when Turkey and China are procuring the same thing from the Russia, on Turkey and China the sanction have been imposed. Fine, India buying S-400 from Russia, no sanctions on India. Turkey, China buying the same thing from Russia, on them the sanctions have been imposed. So again we see it is American exceptionism for India. American ex exceptionism for India. Then the next thing that comes here in this particular direction is that 
a question comes that why these exceptions are given to india they what are the reasons so first reason in this particular direction is that fine india is world's most populous country inclusive pluralistic democracy so ideological matching is there between the india and usa we are the most populous country so we are a one of our very important stakeholder in the world politics and therefore us wants to cooperate collaborate with india second thing is india's attractiveness as an economic market we have the biggest market india's a tech america's a tech companies they need india third is the geographical advantage geography of it, india now understand this thing india is the neighbor to china and china is going to be the next adversary of the usa us wants the reliable and dependable partner against the china now usa cannot depend or cannot rely on the european country because the european countries don't have direct dispute with the china but india has direct dispute with the china so using india fine uh, against the china makes more sense for usa so india can be a meaningful ally to the us vis-a-vis -vis china is concerned then the next is the indian american diaspora now basically guys the indians living in america they have been the law abiding uh, law abiding people least troublesome people so out of all the diasporas that are there in america indian diaspora is the most cultured one most uh, law abiding one okay so therefore uh, so therefore this particular thing and the indian diaspora is also the biggest votary of the india us ties so these are the things that it has led to so much of increase in cooperation between india and us this is the reason that so much of the exceptions is being given to the india is it clear or not however however because of this particular thing earlier partners of us such as pakistan egypt turkey saudi arabia even china they say okay, that there is a fickleness that is coming in the american foreign policy against them okay but anyhow it is working in the advantage of india so i hope that you have understood it so this is all about it and now we'll move to the next article okay a model for quality and inclusive education this article we'll see with respect to the gs paper number 2 issues related to the education uh, one thing guys you are not required to go too much in detail in this particular article because article is talking specifically to the education issues related to the tamil nadu we'll see okay but too much details are not needed for the upsc examination because a state specific models or questions are actually that not much asked but we'll take all the gist now first of all before going in this particular article the article is talking about the recent nirf national institutional ranking framework rankings of 2023 now what nirf is nirf national institutional ranking framework it ranks the higher educational institution in india okay so 11 categories are there within which the higher educational institutions would be ranked okay now on the basis of this particular ranking the students can make a meaningful decision which college you want to take admission moreover these particular rankings also instill a competitive spirit in the institutions if you got a good ranking you'll try to retain that if you got a poor ranking you'll try to improve that ranking by seeing the good performers okay so this is uh, this is about the nirf so basically 2023 nirf has shown this thing that there are lot of colleges or higher institutions from tamil nadu they have got a good rank now first of all when we talk about the nirf nirf ranking is calculated on to the basis of the five parameters number one is teaching learning and resources it is given 40% weightage graduation outcome research and professional practice outreach and inclusivity these are the five parameters on which the ranking is calculated within these parameters there are also the sub components also that are there so in total we can say that this is a very broad parameter based ranking system and the rankings are very much objective okay and to get a ranking in the top 100 is a great deal for the college and the poor colleges fine who know that they will get a very poor ranking they don't participate because of the pro performance pressure also that is there so point is that getting top 100 rank on these parameters under the nirf is a big deal and we find this particular thing that the colleges and the higher institutions in tamil nadu had performed relatively good so this year out of the 100 top nirf ranked colleges in 2023 35 are there in tamil nadu 
So out of 100, 35 are there in Tamil Nadu, which is good. If you see, it's not the case that all the southern Indian states have performed good. For example, in Karnataka, there are just two colleges. Okay, Tilangana has only one college, Andhra Pradesh has no college and Tamil Nadu got 35. So it shows the quality of higher education in the Tamil Nadu. Okay, and second is that if we see the Tamil Nadu has constantly a very good performer in the last five years and the number of colleges participating from Tamil Nadu, they have also grown. Okay, and uh, uh, Tamil Nadu is retaining the top position. Delhi also got a good position in 2022. So, this shows that how much focus Tamil Nadu has given on the higher educational institutions, okay, which is a good case study. One more data I want to tell you. When we talk about the gross enrollment in the higher education, it is around 27% for all India average. But for the case of Tamil Nadu, it is actually around 53-54%. So, enrollment in higher education in Tamil Nadu is good. Quality of education is good. Okay. Now, we have this particular article. India needs a uniform civil code, affirms Modi. Uh, first of all, guys, you are not required to go too much in detail in this particular article because this is a statement that has been given and the every statement uh, of the political leaders is not that much important for the exam point of view. But we find that right now, considerable focus or attention is being made onto the uniform civil code. We have discussed also, I think, many, many number of times what the uniform civil code means. So, the idea of uniform civil code is that Right now, guys, criminal laws are uniform for everyone. If a person committed a murder, there will be the same punishment to everyone. Doesn't matter what your religion is. But when the personal laws come, in the personal civil laws, we have four subjects: marriage, adoption, divorce, and inheritance. For the personal civil law, for the personal civil matters, different different religion, different different religions have been given a power that they can have their own rules and their own laws. For example, within Muslims. You know that instant triple talaq prevailed earlier, though it got invalidated in 2019. But that instant triple talaq was not there for other communities. Still, when we talk about the Muslims, the uh, Muslims, the women, once they attain puberty, they can get married. And a uh, woman attains a puberty at the age of 14 to 15 years. But the Prevention of Child Marriage Act provides that a girl cannot be married before the age of 18. The so point is that many number of times these civil laws, they are coming in conflict with the secular laws or the existing laws of our country. So we need that a uniform civil code should be there for all the religious communities. This proposal is being made. Even the recent law commission, 22nd law commission have said that let's ask the people whether they want a UCC or not. And the prime minister is also saying that now the country needs UCC. But if Problem with respect to the UCC is that, that whenever the UCC is proposed, fine, the tribal people, the minority religion, they feel that their culture is getting sidelined. They are getting homogenized in one culture. Okay. And just two, three days back, we have seen one article also on this particular line. Virtually in every week, we have one or two editorials that are coming in UCC. This is all about it. Beyond that, no need to go too much in detail here. And uh, after this, we have the mains practice question for today. So the main practice question for today, it reads, India, US-India bilateral ties have grown for the past 25 years due to America's unprecedented exception for India. From the nuclear waiver in 2000 to the transfer technology in 2023. Analyze. So 10 marker question for GS paper number 2, IR. That is all about it. Okay, guys, I hope that you have understood it. And with this, we come to an end to the today's session. Thank you so much.